Welcome, EP. Chapter 10, Gases. Gases is probably one of the most favorite chapters uh, students do because one, a ton of math, uh, and hardly any explanation, but you still have to understand the property of gases. So I want to give you a little heads up on what's coming because 10.1, uh, very short, because uh, we're comparing states of matters. So uh, characteristic of gases, Although relatively few substances exist as gases under typical conditions, they're very, very important. Obviously, the gases we breathe, the gases surrounding us, the gases in the atmosphere, I mean, hydrogen, helium, oxygen, nitrogen, very, very, very important gases. So in regards to AP, before I show you um, the chart that's coming, Chapter 10 is about gases and obviously in what's called gas laws. We're going to be talking about in this chapter, which is called, this is a big chunk of space right here before we get to the table, so you can write some stuff down. Uh, gases and gas laws, uh, we're going to be talking about the different properties of that change, pressure, volume, temperature, and Mr. Moles, he's back, yay! So your favorite topic also, Mr. Uh, Stoichiometry, yay, he's coming back too. See, I told you, you're going to love this chapter. Uh, we're also going to talk about uh, kinetic energy moving energy versus energy of position. So I know you've seen this PE guy before, uh, potential energy, we saw him in chapter nine, the position, inter internuclear position versus breaking bonds. You saw that graph, okay? So you're not gonna see the graph, but we're gonna talk about the two different uh, type of um, energies. We have lots and lots and lots of gas laws, lots of gas laws. Okay, you're going to hear about some scientists. You know how Rodriguez get, loves to give the, the scientists some props out there. Uh, we have um, a conversation of what's called kinetic molecular theory. This one is the explaining. Okay, uh, it's not hard explaining, uh, but we just have to explain properties of a gas. And we when we explain, and I know it's going to seem like Rodriguez is kind of tripping out, but when we explain the properties, we have to think like a gas, and we have to think what gases will behave as. So I know that sounds a little bit weird, Rodriguez. I gotcha, okay? And then at the very end, we're gonna talk about something called real gases versus ideal gases, okay? So you're gonna get some help also on the equation sheet with this chapter, because obviously it's been a long time since we've done any math. We saw a little bit in chapter eight, but nothing to get too uh, crazy about. But we do have a lot of stuff to talk about. There's even nine sections in this chapter, so it's gonna take us a good two weeks to get to this. But what is coming? These next three chapters, chapter 10, 11, and 12, it's about the properties of the states of matters. So we're gonna get to chapter 11, and most AP kids, they will tell you this is one of the most evil chapters, and it's very, very important on the AP test. It's probably one of the top five topics on the AP test. In here, we're going to talk about something called intermolecular forces. So there are three types of forces, and you're going to see a little bit of this coming in. And Miranda, give me a little shout out, when you saw the video at the end of chapter nine, where it started talking about intermolecular forces of something called London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole forces, uh, hydrogen bonding, and then we have ion dipole, and you guys have actually done a little bit of this guy in chapter four. You just didn't put a name on him, okay? But remember when we dropped those strong electrolytes in water and they broke apart? How you showed me it was attracted to water? You did it, okay? So Marlene, giving you a shout out, some drawings, you in the water and the ions, you do very well with that. But we're also going to talk about properties of liquids. When you change that temperature, that pressure, uh, that volume, what's going to happen to the forces when you do that? Okay, so we're going to get some love to the liquids here. And then chapter 12, I spend probably maybe two days the most on properties of solids. And you have to know the four types of solids. Okay. So that is what's coming our way because the rest of the year is a lot, a lot of math. And when I say a lot, a lot of math, uh, I'm, I'm no, not joking. Okay, about 90% of what we're gonna do 
term three and four is a lot of math. Okay, so I'm just giving you a little heads up uh, because 10.1 is very short. I'm going to show you right now the chart uh, before we get into the, the beginning calculations of 10.2. Okay, so here we go. And I told you it's a chart. So in this chart, I want you to compare and contrast. Okay, there's not a lot of notes to make because I made the notes for you. But I want you to go step by step and find some comparing and contrast. Okay, so this is stuff we did in CP, but I'm sorry, CP or honors. Uh, however, in my class in honors, we didn't get to this chapter. It would have been the very next chapter after the story geometry. So uh, CP, you may have saw some of this stuff with gas laws, but if not, well, here you go. When it comes to shape, okay, they have a definite shape. Okay, so if you put a cube in there for solid, or if you put a chunky piece of metal, the shape's not going to change when you put it in the container. So we are comparing it to putting it into some type of beaker, container, box, whatever it may be. When you put your liquid into that container, it always takes the shape of the container. So think of your orange juice. It's going to take the shape of the glass that you put it in, or the beaker, or the graduate cylinder. However, with gases, they do not take a shape. Okay, the gases, there is no definite shape to them. For volume, obviously these two are the same. The volume will not change. If you put one gram of sugar, it's still going to be one gram. You put one liter in Remember these right here, we're talking about uh, so solids uh, with this. So we're talking about like grams, stuff like that. For volume, we're talking about mils or liters. You put 10 liters in that container, it's still 10 liters, okay? However, when it comes to gases, it's not definite because they will expand. And this is why gases are homogeneous, okay? Because they will fill up the whole entire t container. So if you have some nitrogen, and maybe this guy's oxygen, you got some nitrogen down here, and maybe some oxygen here, and some nitrogen, they're going to fill up entirely, okay? So you're not going to have, like, oxygen sitting on the bottom, nitrogen sitting on the top. doesn't work like that with gases, okay? When it comes to spacing, the particles are close together, as you see in the picture right there at the top. Particles are close to each other, but not close like a solid. Okay, so I'm going to put right here, more spread out than solids. Okay, and a lot of this is review. It, it needs to be a lot of review back from chapter one and two. And with gases, definitely huge spaces, huge spaces between them. So they... Uh, and you're going to find out about these attraction, these forces, okay? They do not uh, want to be close to each other. When it comes to vibration, what happens is in a solid, okay? So remember we talked about like crystals, those three-dimensional shapes. And it's a little bit hard to draw in this little tiny little boxes. What happens is, is in between here, the solid, imagine your sugar, your sugar is not jumping all over the place, okay? However, the bonds, these bonds between them, they do vibrate like back and forth. So I always like to tell students, think of like a slinky. If you actually had a slinky in front of you and it just went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, it that's literally what the bonds are doing. But your sugar is not jumping from the kitchen to the living room to the bathroom. That's not what solids do. And if it does, that's some freaky sugar. So only you get the vibration of the bonds. Diffusion, you're going to hear about this word diffusion when you get to about 10.6 in this chapter, uh, does not flow. So your sugar does not flow from one location to the other, okay? With the liquid, you have constant moving. What they do is they slide past each other. So with those liquids, you're going to get these guys that just slide, and then they slide, and they go back and forth, and that's why they call flow. So they do move from one location to another. So diffusion is about the moving of location from one spot to the other. And it does move, just very slow. And you have no collisions that are happening here. So think of it like if you were moving through the hallways, you move through one side, another student moves past you, but you don't like collide into that student. So I mean, you don't have just giant collisions throughout the hallways because then those people don't know how to walk, okay? So you have to think of like liquids, like moving through a hallway, moving in a classroom, going from aisle to aisle. You're not bumping into stuff, okay? You're just moving, so there is no collisions. 
However, with gases, we got collisions galore because they hit each other and then they bounce off. So with these gases, when they hit another ga gas, they hit it and then they bounce to another direction. And even gases, they'll hit the wall and bounce to another direction. So they have very fast movement. They will go from one location to the other. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, diffusion. Diffusion is about how it flows and how it flows from one location to the other. When it comes to homogeneous and heterogeneous, remember hetero, uh, not uniformed composition, and make sure you know those proper definitions. And what we mean by you would see chunks or layers or floaties, okay? You actually see that chocolate chip cookie, and you see the chocolate versus the dough versus the nuts and so forth, so forth, okay? Liquids can be both. They can be homogeneous or heterogeneous because it has to do with, oh, that, that word is back. I know it's, it's evil. It has to do with polarity. So think of this, okay? It's always think of water and oil. Water is polar. And we know why it's polar, those uneven distribution of electrons. But oil is just a whole bunch of C's and H's, and that is nonpolar. You ever want anything to dissolve into each other, they have to be the same polarity. So unfortunately with water and oil, it's heterogeneous because they don't have the same polarity. But if I want to dissolve something in water, then I just get another polar substance out there, like alcohols. Alcohols are polar because of those OH bonds that they have. So alcohols and waters do dissolve in each other. Gas is always homogeneous. Doesn't matter what the gases are, don't matter how heavy they are. We don't discriminate in that category. They're all homogeneous. Compression, we're going to talk about a lot about balloons in this chapter since we're going to start with the gases. Uh, and compressions, obviously you took that sugar and put in your sand, you pushed down on it. Well, it's still sugar. You haven't changed the shape or volume. It's still what it is. Same thing with liquids. You press on that water. Well, you got a mess, but you haven't changed anything about that pressure or volume. But the problem is when it comes to gases, when you do take that balloon, oops, and I know that's pretty. When you do hit that balloon and you do apply a force on that balloon and you took your giant hand, hopefully I drew enough fingers, and you push down on that balloon, what happens is there's a lot of empty spaces in those particles. And when you have a lot of empty spaces, you bring those particles closer. So now that empty space is not as much empty as it was. So that you bring the particles closer, okay? And with the bringing of those particles closer, what happens is it's pressure and volume that is changing. So when pressure is applied, AKA that force, and what happens is the volume of this, the volume shrinks. And usually it's gonna sh just shrink by about half or a fourth or an eighth. It just depends on how much pressure you apply. So if you put twice as much pressure on this, your volume is going to shrink by half. And it's one of the first laws we're going to look at uh, called Mr. Boyle's Law. So we're going to look at him in 10.3. Density, we have talked density to death. And I ain't going to lie to you, ladies and gentlemen, density is going to make a very evil appearance. Uh, I want to say around 10.6, 10.5. Uh, and we're going to do the calculations for density. He has his own equation when it comes to gases. So density for solids, usually very high densities because usually they're going to sink in water. And we like to keep those units grams per centimeters cubed because we got to remember, ladies and gentlemen, we can't forget Mr. Density. We got that mass over volume and the mass will always be grams. It's the volume. The volume is dependent on state of matter okay so that's why you see the denominators changing liquids usually have low densities they can float in water or they can sink in water it just depends on what water's density is and remember mr water's density and let's give him a little love over here water's density 1.0 grams per mil okay and because gases uh are usually even less than water okay we tend to use the units for a gas uh, grams per liter. 
okay, because usually gases are in big quantities and uh, liters are much bigger than mils. And here comes this guy. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about this right here until chapter 11, but what happens is, is attraction and forces and these things called intermolecular forces. Sometimes the states of matters, those forces will change. So in a solid, the more motion of the particles is very limited because all you get is vibration between the bonds. However, when it comes to liquids, and like I said, this is where the chapter 11 is going to come in. We're going to talk about how liquids change in boiling point, vapor pressure, that's what VP is, viscosity, surface tension, and that's all related to those three forces, okay? And I'm like I said, I'll get more into that chapter 11. I just put it in here so that way we have this in our notes. So when we get to chapter 11, it's like, oh, okay, I remember something about that in chapter 10. But we'll go into great detail chapter 11. And in gases, there is hardly any interactive forces, okay? So what we do with gases is we start to change the moles, the pressure, the volume, and the temperature. And by changing those, we can see how the gas will change, okay? But when it comes to intermolecular forces, the attraction between the forces, because I'm going to make sure I get that definition down, uh, it's the attraction between other molecules. So one molecule to another. So what it comes down to with liquids, uh, liquids have a lot of attraction. But when it comes to gases, uh-uh, hardly any attraction. Because remember, they're colliding. They're not trying to bond unless you actually want a chemical reaction. So with a nitrogen and an oxygen, they'll just bounce off each other and go somewhere else. Okay, but there's hardly any attraction that goes with force uh, gases. I can't say none. That's why it says minimal to none. Okay, that, ladies and gentlemen, is 10.1. I told you it's very short, sweet, because we have to look at the differences between a solid, liquid, or gas, because you're going to see it when we get to. A